May we join together in the call to worship. You see the printed there. I am the people. I mean, I am the minister and you are the people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing, sing to the Lord all the earth. Gather to bless God's holy name. Tell of God's love to the end of your days. If you flip your service over, you'll see I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Anybody know this song? Oh, I'll have to sing loudly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You think you might know it? I don't know. All right, no. <laughs> Start I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. Well done. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we gather here this night to give thanks and to give honor. To give thanks to you for watching over us each and every day. To give thanks to you for the gift of this place and these people and this college and these students. To give thanks, Lord, for the chance to learn, the chance to serve, and the chance to serve in your world. And we come here, Lord, to give honor, to give honor to hard work, to give honor to those who graduate, to give honor to those who make it possible for family and friends, professors and staff. Most of all, Lord, we come here to give thanks to you and honor to you in all that we do. For we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Jesus came and recited all the words of the songs and the hearing of the people, he and Joshua, son of Nun. When Moses had finished reciting all the words to Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words that I am giving and witness against you today. Give them as a command to your children, so that you may diligently observe all the words of this law. This is no trifling matter for you, but rather your very life. Though, it may, though you may live long in the land that you are crossing over, sorry, through it you may live long in the land, that you are crossing over the Jordan to possess. On that very day, the Lord addressed Moses as follows, Ascend to, the, ascend to the mountain of Abram, Mount Noab, which is in the land of Moab, across from Jericho, and view the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites for a possession. You shall die there on the mountain that you have ascended, and you shall gather it, you shall gather there to your kin, as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his kin. Because both of you broke faith, with me among the Israelites in the waters of the Meribath Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, by failing to maintain my holiness among the Israelites. Although you may view the land from a distance, you shall not enter it, the land that I am giving to the Israelites. And then Matthew 28, the 16th, beginning of the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Each week we invite a, a member of the faculty, staff, or a, a student to come and to share their perspective on faith. And each year I begin our chapel services, the, the first chapel service of the year, by offering my perspective on faith. And, and it's the, the last chapel service of the year, so this Vesper service, I offer it again. And so this is a special Vesper service, particularly for those of you who are graduating. This I believe. I believe in the power of sunsets. I believe in the meaning of vistas. I believe in the awe of an approaching storm, a starry night, a crimson sky. I believe each of these is a gift, a gift given as a reminder. I believe that they are given to remind us of beauty, of majesty, of power, of how small, small we are and how grand God is. I believe that knowing we are small and that God is grand are great things because they remind us of how blessed we are to share in God's work, in God's creation, in God's grace, in God's love. I believe that knowing this is transformative because it dares us to look inside of ourselves to find God's grand image cast in each of us. 
to discover God's intimate touch, to hear God's still, quiet voice. I believe that this voice, while quiet, is not timid. I believe that this voice, like our God, asks us to do grand, world-changing things. I believe this voice challenges us not just to feel the love of God, but also to become the love of God. I believe that this voice challenges us not just to know the grace of God, but also to become the grace of God. I believe that this voice challenges us not just to see God's creation, but also to create a new world of grace and love in God's name. I believe that this voice challenges us not just to hear the work of God, but also to do the work of God in a world where there is much work to be done. I believe that this voice speaks to each of us in a unique way, and that we must listen closely to hear the specific tasks awaiting us. I believe that God expects us to use our voice to speak for others who cannot speak, whose voices have been stripped away, or who never had a voice. I believe that God may use our time together at Young Harris College to open us up to hear that voice, to inspire us to use our voice, to empower us to speak truth to power, and to offer new life in God's radically new kingdom. This I believe. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Spirit, that your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us this day. Amen. In the first text I read tonight, it was a text from Deuteronomy. It's a text that might be familiar to you. It's, a, it's the story there at the very end of Israel's journeying through the wilderness to the Promised Land. Now, if you recall, Israel had been captive in Egypt. They had fled the Pharaoh. They had crossed the Red Sea, and they had spent 40 years wandering through the wilderness. Now, of course, any time we hear the word 40 in Scripture, we know it doesn't literally mean 40. It simply means a long time. So Israel had been wandering through the wilderness a long time. And now they were standing on the very edge of another river. You see, it was one body of water they crossed the Red Sea that brought them into the wilderness. And now it's another body of water they are about to cross the Jordan that is going to lead them into the promised land. The land that God has said will be yours. And so Moses speaks to the people. And then God takes... <coughs> Moses to the mountaintop. And he says, Now behold, there's the land that I have promised. Behold, there's the land that I have promised. There on that mountaintop, Moses is told, You're not going to go there with them, but there's a good promise waiting your people. Tonight, some of us are coming to the end of our Young Harris College journey. For some of you, it might have felt like I was wandering through the wilderness for a long time. <laughs> for some of you, you'll look back and realize how quickly it has passed. Just a few weeks ago, I got to, to go to my own undergraduate again for a, a meeting, and I realized how quickly four years seemed to pass. So while it might have seen like a long time, like sometimes you were in the thick wilderness of studying, of tests, of papers. There's always the promised land <laughs> called graduation. And so tonight I bring you up here on this mountaintop to look out and to see the promised land. You know the promised land that you see? We call that your future. <laughs> And not all of us get to go with you. But you get to go into your future. We can see it. It's a beautiful place. And because we can't go with you, we send with you some things that hopefully will make your journey that much easier. We send with you knowledge you have gained in classes from professors for conversations with friends and books you have read and lectures you have heard. Knowledge that will help hopefully make it 
easier for you in the life that lies before you. But we also send with you love. Love of friends that you have met in this place. Friends that have cared for you. Who might get to journey with you. Some you might leave behind. But whose memories and care will take you a long way. And we send with you hope. The hopes and the dreams and the wishes of people that for 125 years have been sending students into their futures. Hopes for my, why, what might come. <coughs> hopes for a world that would be better because you are in it. Hopes for the promise. The promise of love and of care and of service to others. But the good news of that particular sending was this. That unlike Moses who couldn't go with them, unlike all of us who can't go with you, God promises in that passage, He says, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. So when you leave our lives this week, when you are no longer with us day in and day out, you're with us in memory and we're with you. The knowledge you have gained is a little bit of knowledge in presence of us. But no matter how far you go, your God is always right beside you, walking with you, carrying you, embracing you. And where will God lead you? Where will you go? Where is your future to take you? What is your promised land? We don't know the answers to all those questions. But we trust that you have the skills to go there and that your God will make sure you get there. So look. See your future. Before we were the boat that carried you. Now we are the wind that blows your sail. Sail well, brothers and sisters. Sail well. Amen. So where the mountains blue are pointing toward the sky, there stands our alma mater, dear. That's where our hearts all lie. We're true to the dear YHC. Thy fame is our delight. We hail thee, Alma Mater, dear, thy purple and thy white. Though time may pass o'er these dear halls, we'll still come back to thee. And still we'll cherish memories of our days at YHC. We're true to Thee, dear YHC, Thy faith is our delight. We hail Thee, Alma Mater, dear, Thy purple